September. The word rings different to the ears of a hunter. This is where months of practice, training, and scouting are put to the final test. Mother Nature puts on a show as summer turns to fall, making it arguably the greatest time to adventure in the outdoors. There is crisp, canyon walls rattle from the piercing bugles of bull elk. This year, I purchased a license to hunt elk with my bow on an OTC or over-the-counter unit. Odds of success are low, around 12%, and much lower if your goal is to kill a mature bull. Nonetheless, I find great joy in the tag as it allows me to hunt the rugged mountains just outside of home. Now this hunt is nothing like what you've read in the magazines. There are popular foot trails and large portions of private land that neighbor the national forest. Oftentimes, by first light, elk are bumped by another person or are out of play. Some days you may only get a solid half hour of hunting in. But if you stay consistent and find a bull, you can experience everything you've dreamed of when it comes to hunting elk with a bow. That is the mission I set out on this year, a solo, self-documented elk hunt. September 11th, this is my third day in after elk. They are going nuts today. It sounds like we have three bulls in here. Um, it's 6.30, we got about 20 minutes. I'm gonna strip down, get into some hunting clothes, and then we're after elk. Today could be the day. Yeah, you know, they're really active, it sounds like. The next couple of mornings, I would classify the hunting as good. Well, at least for these mountains. Before sunrise, the elk were bugling all through the morning. But right as that sun began to hit the ridge, I would only catch a glimpse of the bulls as they would drift off into an area that is out of play. After consistently seeing the broken six point a few days in a row and not having much for an opportunity, I decided to switch up the strategy, cover some ground, and try to locate some new elk.
after locating a pretty nice bull and having a close encounter, I decided to focus in on that area. I headed back the next evening to do some glassing and observe. The elk were active early around 4.30, already bugling. I quickly located the big bull from a couple days prior. He was very vocal and had about five cows he was tending to. I could tell there were other bulls in the area as I could hear two or three just over the ridge from him. Before I could make a play, another hunter came in and bumped the elk without even knowing. I ventured back in another day and had a close encounter with the herd. I snuck in as I could hear them talking just up the draw from me. I got in close, just 45 yards from the herd, but I never did get a good look at the bull. It was a risky move as my wind was bad. Sure enough, they smelled me and took off. September 20th, came up for the evening hunt, gonna glass and listen for bugles and move in on elk if we, if we hear any. The last five days have been really slow. I haven't gotten into a rut fest or anything like that. I have come up for a couple evenings and I mean around 3.30 to 5.30, anywhere in there, I've heard a lot of bugles. So we're trying a different spot this evening. I've, I've ran cameras in here before, um, we're gonna get set up and start listening. All right, well that didn't take long at all. Um, it's 5.15 and I just heard a bull bugle. He's quite a ways off in the distance. If I work down into this canyon and then I get into position, you know, the closest I can get, at least I'll be there for if he comes up right at last light and I'll have an opportunity to make a move. Usually it never works out, but we're gonna go for it. Uh, kind of use our past years of knowledge and in this little area and try to, try to put it to use here. So we're gonna get ready, get my long sleeve on and uh, Head in, throw the head cam on, and we're gonna go after this bull.
I just jumped. A group of elk. All I saw was cows. And I came out into this opening. And I saw a little five point, four point rackle. 80 yards away. He ran uphill and bugled. And then back where I just came from, the bull with the cows bugled. So he's back where I just came from. I just walked by him. So I'm gonna try to come up this little opening and get on him. Slowly making my way through the trees, I could hear him bugle every couple of minutes. After cutting off a couple hundred yards, I could now tell by the sounds of branches breaking and the elk talking amongst one another, I was within shooting range. I could make out a couple cows, but I couldn't see the bull. Watch close between the two trees in front of me as the camera catches movement of the bull before my eyes could. Once I got sight of the bull, I ranged him at 65 yards. As bulls typically are during the rut, they don't stay stationary for long. He moved and turned away, presenting me with no shot. Despite the cooler temperatures and it being evening, the elk still caught a little bit of my wind and began to move uphill. Oftentimes this is heartbreaking as a hunter and not a good sign, but knowing the layout of the land, I knew if I made a quick climb, I might be able to cut them off before they left the canyon. As I suspected, they held up in the highest patch of trees. I caught up to them and was now 95 yards away. Too far for a shot, but I at least had a chance. I was in the red zone. The elk pushed back to my left onto a thick pine bench. I could only catch bits and pieces of elk moving through the trees, so I knew I needed to reposition myself. I dropped elevation, got the wind right, and began working back up towards the elk. It had now been 15 to 20 minutes since I'd last seen any movement. I knew I was close, but how close, I couldn't tell you. It was too thick. I didn't take one step without scanning and picking apart every opening I could. Being this close, every step counts. I lucked out, and a bull bugled down the canyon behind me sparking the big bull's attention. Only 25 yards away and at full draw yet again, but no shot. 
As the bull worked back uphill, I had to push forward and close another 30 yards off before I could sit down and get into a new position. I was now within 35 yards of two cow elk, one to my left and one in front. I was stuck. As the last minutes of light began to fade, I remained patient, sitting in the dirt, motionless. Finally, I caught movement as the bull revealed himself. He was 52 yards away as he stopped to rub his antlers on a pine tree. Look close on the right side of the screen. This was going to be my last chance. Then suddenly, my head camera died. Opportunities are too few and far between. I pulled my bow back, now for the third time tonight. The bull stopped and turned his body with his head facing to my left. I let my pin settle behind his shoulder and then released the arrow. It was a soft sound, but I knew it was a good hit as his back end dropped before running off. I grabbed my chest camera and ran to keep up with him. He stopped just 50 yards after, and I was now only 33 yards away. Not knowing where I hit exactly, I knew I should set the camera down and put one more in him to be safe. Another hit. I picked the camera up as the bull ran only another 50 yards, then stopped again. Right as he came out at last possible light, he started raking that tree. <sighs> Looked at me at 52 yards, turned, started raking from the other angle. Shot hit him. He ran 30, 40 yards. I chased him down, got 33 yards from him. And uh, I could hear him coughing and he was just sitting there. So I shot him again. He's right here tangled up dead. cold so I got my clothes all my clothes on while I wait for Connor and I actually found some firewood that I'm gonna try to build a little fire with uh, before we get cutting this this elk up gonna use some of this pyro putty to get it going light a match and that'll hopefully start burning in there I got some headlights coming The army is here. Connor and Braden just made a beast hike to get over to me. Whew. What's up, big buck slayer? <laughs> big bull slayer? I'm so proud of you, man. Come here, dude. You deserve this so much, dude. Unreal. The reinforcement is here. We got Connor and Braden. Came to pack him out. They got up here quick. It's a death hike in here, but uh. We're going to get him out now. Unreal experience. Like this is everything. Tonight was everything you dream of when you hunt elk. Luckily there was a few other elk talking and that kept him vocal. Got on him one time at 65 yards. 
uh, drew back, just no, sh uh, no shot. He moved too quickly. Did a big push up this face and then uh, got underneath him at 100 yards. He fed back into those trees and then that's when I crept up into those thick quakies. Again, got in range, 25 yards, he's bugling in my face. Um, no shot, came to full draw and then got in 35 yards from some cows so I couldn't move. They were kind of watching me. And as you'll see in the video, head cam died, of course, right when the bull stepped out at 52 yards. He starts raking that pine tree. Looked at me, turned, gave me a broadside shot, and I, I hit him. So, unreal experience. Like, it just happens so quick, and then it almost seems like, like, how could you ever mess up when it all comes together? It just happens perfectly, but then sitting here waiting for Connor to and Braden to show up I just thought about all the years and like failed stocks I've had on bulls where I've been so close and then it doesn't come together so having it finally come together is really special and just a memory that obviously will last a lifetime this was the cool, one of the coolest things I've ever done so thanks big bull now we got some work to do and We'll get out of here. Yeah. 5.05, Braden and I are just taking the last load to the ridge line and we got about four miles back to the, the truck. He died in a, got him in a big nasty hole. So uh, it's been quite the chore, but once we get up here, it's kind of a little bit flat for a way, so that'll be nice crazy like it's fun hunting on this is fun too but man freaking it 700 pound animal or whatever it is it's a lot of work getting them out Halfway done with this adventure. Now it's just back and forth trips. We're hoping for two. Might have to do another one tomorrow and get the head just because it's so awkward to pack that thing. But for now, we get all the meat out tonight. Or this morning, I should say. anymore wow what an incredible hunt an incredible journey this has been watch the sunset as I shot this bull right at last light and now it's been an all-night ordeal and uh, I'm watching the sun rise as I take out the last part of this bull take out his head cape and antlers 
some awesome friends, awesome people. Jared Thomas, like I said, he came up 4.30 in the morning. Uh, he brought a bike so he could get in quick and he took uh, two, two quarters out. And of course, Connor and Braden hiking in through the night and helping with the, on foot, helping pack everything out. So I'm so appreciative of good friends and good people. The mountain has blessed me with them, with some great friends over the years. And now an amazing bull. It's kind of cool just him and I sitting up here, taking in the sunrise. Probably shut the camera down here and take a moment to myself and then try to get him out of here. September, man, it's a special time of year. I'm exhausted. What an experience. Bow hunting elk in the run. In the steep, rugged mountains of Utah. Life's good. <laughs>